be God just bought a paper recently. We're going to bring it up and, and pay to be on it. Yeah, it's yeah, a, the paper's in, in Dickinson County right now. And as soon as it gets done, we'll have it. And 624 is on the what, six year plan. 624. Yeah, I don't I don't have the full plan in front of me. It might be a few years out, but I'm I'm pretty sure it is on the on the plan. It is. Yeah. I live there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I know right where you live. I think you do. Let me mention Sarah Circle. The gentleman from American Legion mentioned it earlier and he kind of threw that in at the end. He's the bus driver down there that has a problem. I heard he mention something, but I couldn't a year, a year and a half ago, when I first came on board, that was the first complaint I had. And he didn't finish the whole story, this gentleman this morning did. There's a culvert that goes from Sarah Circle over under the Dam of Boone Road toward the railroad that is a half to three-fourths full. Every rain like this one we got this week, it, it floods several <coughs> homes, basements up through there. Uh, on that circle and I was told I guess a year ago that there was some new machines that would actually replace culverts and uh, they uh, the two people from VDOT left here and went down there and talked to property owners and that's a that's the last I've heard of it yeah that was Mr. Christian and myself went down it to was, yes, and yes. Uh, we had plans to to put in a new culvert there and, and change the, the angle of it because the angle it's sitting on right now, once the creek gets up, it's back flushing like a three by right. culvert. Uh, it has been put in for environmental clearance. Uh, so we will, we do have the work plan to do, just waiting on clearances and um, things are just getting really backed up with shortage of labor and materials and everything. So. That's understandable. He mentioned the west side of Sarah Circle. That sounds like just a chug over or something on that end. I drove it two or three times just looking and seeing what he was talking mm -hmm. about. And that culvert's a problem. I think that's the main thing. I, I agree. Yeah. And, we, and we do have a <coughs> okay. plan to replace. All right. I have a, <coughs> this is a question that a citizen had asked me in our community, and, and he may be watching, and that's okay. And I'll try to explain the best I know how. I know VDOT wants people to go to the website and yes. you know to do the uh, fill out the work orders and things like that. <clears throat> so is there a way? To, uh, it can come from any one of our districts, and all these work orders go in, but there's no feedback in, to us in, in our county that we're able to uh, you know off a spreadsheet you know. And, Okay. having some sort of feedback you know that way I can, I can definitely get the board some information on current open work orders and, and that, that would be, sort that, of thing so. well that's, that would be helpful I mean I guess that's what we're trying to get at because um, you know a lot of citizens from each of our districts could put you know, work order in I wouldn't yeah. even know about it or they wouldn't know about it um, it would be helpful to us to know that progress, you know, is yeah. is happening on the county side of it. Okay. You know, um, if that makes sense. Yes, it, it does, and and I'll work on getting the board some information on. Okay. I have to and, and and just for some perspective, we Scott County, we get more work orders from from Scott County. We get a, at least three thousand work orders a year from Scott County, and at the least. Or, or, or Blackmore, for instance. Each of our employees has 130 miles of road that, per employee that they're responsible for. So it, it's a lot of work, and we're, we're we're trying some new things to to try to keep up with some of it and, and get ahead. And we'll talk more about that. Yeah, know, after after this meeting. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll definitely get. We'll come up with a way to get you some information on, on what's open. Um, the progress of it, that sort of thing. I think that would be helpful to each of the supervisors here as well. Um, highway 58 tree situation, we've talked about this before. Yes. Uh, on Highway 58, like you're going towards Hilton, uh, probably about a quarter mile up there, just past uh, 
Pain Hill project that you're working on. Yes. There was a tree that actually fell there a couple weeks ago across the road, 58. We've been talking about this for months. There was another one that's, uh, as a result of that one falling, it's leaning all the way across 58. It's going to fall, okay? Somebody can put some signs out there and make that thing fall without somebody getting hurt. I guess that's the point. <clears throat> Um, AP Quarter Highway, <clears throat> pretty much all the way up through there, I mean, it's, uh, a lot of people like to travel that road, there's a lot of traffic on it. The ditches are very close to the road. And um, in a place or two, you know, where there's covert, um, the pavement has partially broken away there and you try to dodge that if you're meeting a vehicle you've practically got to stop and, uh, and I'll give you more information on that after this but <clears throat> but as a whole the ditches on the on, on the on the highway there's a lot of tiles that are stopped up uh, <clears throat> I told you it wouldn't be too hard um, Long Ridge Road, <clears throat> I think we may have talked about this uh, before. <clears throat> it's off of Highway 23, so we get to the Tennessee State Line. Uh, <clears throat> where the pavement is broken up because of the <clears throat> fuel trucks that are going in, in and out of there. <clears throat> Excuse me. From Barger transport, I guess you'd call it, where they can travel in and out of there. If somebody could take a look at that. I've had citizens that live there call about that. So, and, okay. uh, I have a couple, three other things, but I'll talk with you about that later. Well, I'll get out to Long Ridge and, and take a look at it. Like I, like I said, we recently invested in a, a VDOT on paper so our guys can get out and do some paving ourselves and we don't have to rely on on contractors, so um, that, that's what we got to do to take care of issues like this. So I'll, I'll get out and look at it and see. Appreciate that. See and, I'll, and I'll say this: um, Wade and I talked here a few days ago, and, and uh, we talked about him coming down today. And this is your first time coming up like this in this capacity before us. Appreciate you coming. And, yeah. And Wade's always been very helpful every time I call him to try to get an issue, issue resolved. And, that sort of thing, so I appreciate that very much. Well, I mean, just like the gentleman was talking about you and guys earlier that, you know, you serve the community, that's, that's my job too, that's what I'm, that's what I want to do, I try to do my best at it, um, and, you know, sometimes you can't give people the answer they want, but, but I do, I'm very serious about trying to do my best for the community, and, you like Jack, you like Jack, so. you got a passion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we like to see. <clears throat> well, I've, uh, I've got several roads. One of them was the ball field road that the gentleman was talking about. That's in my district. There's a there's a cluster of unpaved roads uh, yeah. that's around Addington Frame, uh, Midway, Twin Springs. Uh, there's just a cluster of roads. Hell springs, yeah. Yeah, I, as the gentleman was talking, I took up taking some notes, and I, I'm going to go out and see if there's anything we can do to make some improvements. But it, as you guys know, the other only option to get a dirt road paved is the secondary six-year plan. People, so, people are, of course, he he was a little different. Uh, you know, he's wanting his road paved. He's mentioned that several times to me. Yeah. But people in general are getting to the point that they don't care whether it's paved or not. They just they, they've got to have some sort of maintenance done on these roads uh, about, you know, I've turned in, I don't know how many work orders, you know, the simple ones are what I would call simple, they may not be simple to you all, but, you know, going out and just scraping the road, you know, and, and fixing it, that's one thing, but we're going to have to have our ditches cleaned out, we're going to have to have drain tiles put in and cleaned out, I, until that happens, you know, there's, you can go on Hell Springs Road right, right now, I guarantee you. 
and there'll be 15 tons of gravel on private property where it's washed off. You know, this is not just damaging you know, our roads and damaging vehicles that's trying to go over it. It's damaging personal property. You know, because, you know, these, the agricultural property, you know, that's being covered by this, you know, we, we, we've got to figure out a way to control the water. And I know that's hard. Water is probably one of the hardest things to control that, that there is. But, but you know, uh, Luray Road, about, uh, I got a call, I put in several uh, work order things, and I got a call saying that they were going to fix it. But as to my knowledge, Bill lives over there or towards that area. His family does. They they've not done anything yet. Is that right? There's like six or seven drain tiles within a hundred yards, maybe. And I don't. I mean, it's, it's almost like they just put one. And it's real. It's fairly steep. Uh, of course, the bus travels. The bus travels all these roads mm -hmm. per, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, you know, in that in, in this cluster that I'm talking about, and I, I wish we could show it on a map. You know, it, it is it is a cluster. And those of you who know where I'm talking about, there's a lot of roads. Uh, Snowflake Road, I mention that a lot. Uh, it just it's the water situation. It's uh, there there needs to be drain tiles put in, cleaned out. Uh, I I don't know what it would take because you know I I know it's a money issue it takes money to do this it takes manpower to do this but the longer we leave it untouched the worse it's going to get and they'll I bet I bet today we could take a, a four-wheel drive truck and it would drag over a ditch where the water crosses the road you know you could go <laughs> And I, maybe I make it sound simpler than what it is, but you, you could go now and where the water is crossing the road, put a drain tile. Because we're already getting runoff onto private property. and But it's getting all the gravel and dirt. I mean, there's a lot of these roads that's down to the bedrock. You know, there's, there's no gravel there. When they do scrape them, it's just mud. It's not the, the ball field road where this, uh, that, that he was talking about is real steep. It's and I don't know if there's something that you all could do about that. Uh, that 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 would help the runoff there. But it, it's real steep and, and the gravel. The last time I was there, the road was red. It was just a clay. There there was no gravel uh, because all the gravel was in somebody's field down the road. Uh, you know we're. Uh, and it's not just the gravel roads. There's a place, uh, yeah, I meant to get the address. It's on 71, uh, right down below uh, where you turn off to go to Long Holler Road, uh, right, uh, J&P, the, the gas station. It's right down below there. Uh, there is, uh, I guess it's a drain tile issue. You can. It, there's there's so much water going down through there that it's eating away from the bank of where 71 is and eventually that's going to keep on going underneath there uh, but you can you just have to see it to see it does i think i may have looked at that issue does it look like a hole beside of the road as you're yeah there's a there, there, what, there there's a fence there and then yeah, they, what, they what keep that, it mowed the issue there is it's a uh, the issues on private property. There, there's, a, there's a pipe that goes under some private property there. And that pipe has failed, and if it, it would be up to the property owner to fix that portion. If they don't fix that portion first, anything that we do is not, is not going to stay. Or you know. so it, it, it's the property owner that's above where that drain tile goes in or see the right way there. There's a. Um, Somebody has piped like a like an old stream there, okay. and that pipe has started failing, and it's on private property. Where you know we can't do anything about it. But uh, what until that issue is fixed, there's really nothing that we can do that that's going to be able to to stay because every time it rains, until that issue off of our right away is fixed, it's just going to wash this stone away and anything that we 
put in there. So okay. I, I've looked at that one a couple of times and, and tried to reach out to the property owner. Okay. Well, if we're talking about the same yeah, location, I, but it sounds like it. This, this one, the, again, all the runoff is going onto one farm and it's, it's, it's getting piled. I mean, it's probably knee deep of dirt and stone that's coming. It's, but there is, I guess, another drain tile above there that's a private drive that goes underneath that private drive and then it goes down and cuts across 71 onto a pasture field. Okay, if you could, could you give me an address? Yeah, I need to get this more so that I, 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 I can give you need a card before I leave. Okay, so. yeah. I'll, uh, but I, I don't know, I, I might, <laughs> there's there's so many issues it just I, I don't know where to begin I, and it, it, it feels like it were you know uh, Joey was talking about I, 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 it wasn't our life my, was, that, was he here our last meeting or meeting for lunch or something like that you know, he, he said this Scott County was number two you know in with the unpaved roads uh, you know in the whole state uh, but pe people are getting to where you know they they just they want to maintain, you know. If they're, you know, I'm I'm hearing more issues like like that. Uh, you know, we're going to have to we'll have to figure out a way whether we have to reach out to somebody if 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 that's something that we can do as a board to reach out to somebody in Richmond uh, to try to get more funding or whatever manpower. Well, of course, that's funding. Whatever it takes to to help. You know, uh, since we do have the, the, this amount of roads, you know, we need we need the manpower and the financial ability to maintain them. Well, we we're very aware of the issues, and I mean, I, I'm 100% agree with you. Ditchings are a major problem, and in, in the whole wise residency, not just yeah. Scott County, but we are trying different things. We we bought some. How many employees y'all have at Fort Blackmore? At Fort Blackmore, we are supposed to have um, 13, and I think I've got eight, nine right now. We're, we're short a superintendent, yeah. we're short a crew leader, we're short two operators, which is our truck. Did they have, did they have 20 some there at one time? Oh, Lord, yeah. Yeah, back. Because that's part of the issue. But, years, I mean, yeah. It's not your all's fault, I mean, it's just the fact that you. You don't have the resources you have. Well, I mean, and typically we, we've got higher equipment contractors right. that, that we can call for help. And, and with, with all the price increases on fuel and things, all of our contractors are dropping their contracts and, and rebuilding them to fuel costs. So we, we have no higher equipment support right now. It, it's just right. on that. Yeah, we talked talk about that for, for Blackboard. Nicholsville is basically closed. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's not really anybody there that you know uh, work work wise you know yeah. that goes out and uh, yeah we keep some materials yeah, there, think, yeah. But, uh, but uh, I mean it's it's just not you know somebody mentioned and I hadn't really thought about this but uh, the day you know we we the state closed these you know Nick basically Nicholsville Gate City uh, they closed these and we lost those jobs we lost those state paying jobs, you know, that, that, that was there. And, uh, you know, I hadn't really thought about that, but that's right. I mean, you know, it, it's a loss of, of jobs that people be paying into the communities in our, our county. We, we've we lost that and that, uh, you know, for, for the amount of maintenance work that needs to be done just in our county, I'm, I'm sure others are similar, but, but ours with, the, one of the most unpaid roads. I mean, there, there has to be some sort of a maintenance schedule, and I've said that before. I don't know if that's doable, but, but it, and I know it takes money. Well, but, like I said, we are working on some things to try to help in Scott County. We, we're buying new equipment to help with ditching to where we can run a ditching operation with less people and it's more productive. We, uh, we did a test not too long ago with our new a piece of ditching equipment and under the ideal conditions to see how, how many miles of ditching we could do in one day and with this new equipment we got like eight miles of ditching in one day um, but 
and, and we're also looking at through attrition that as some people leave in other counties we may reassign some jobs to scott county that, that'll give us more there bodies to, to help do some work and and then as our new higher equipment contracts and stuff go out to be up and that'll get us some more help well maybe you know, I'll, I'll i'll get in touch with you maybe yeah so yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> one other thing it was i guess what sort of what marshall was talking about if we could just give the people an explanation yeah you know and, and you know it's that's like the Larray road deal and there was some others too that i got a phone call about saying it's going to be fixed then i tell people well, it's going to be fixed and it's still not still not made. And, you know we did not i understand the inflation it's all about the money so but, well uh, we need to do a better job of contacting citizens yeah. to, to let them know what's going on but and yeah, I'll, I'll work with the managers in scott county to make sure that they're keeping citizens better informed and calling write this address down the guy talked to him he had contacted me dog it's 5585 riverwood road i'm sorry that was 5585 yep 5585 river bluff road oh river that, yes 653 i think the south side of the country river uh, and i i contacted somebody about it some time ago and i don't uh, anyway say it's still not fixed what is the drain pipe is totally blocked and it's taking his driveway out every time it rains so it's right there his his driveway and it's i looked at it it's, it's he said every time it rains it's got to be doing the driveway because that pipe is totally blocked okay. i think it's been drove on and caved down on the upper side of it did but you can't even see it. They can see the word exit, you can't see the word enter. So, anyway, if you do that, that's. They said he contacts somebody too. I don't know if it may have been out back when I was up there, so I don't remember, but it's been a long time ago. And so, anyway. But he said that he replaced the pipe himself. I said, well, I don't think so. But uh, he's all done it himself if they'll let me. Is it a cross pipe? Or it a is a cross pipe. It's a cross pipe. It crosses okay. the river Well, uh, I'll get a look at it. But, but his question was, can I fix it myself? He said, I get. I got a tractor stuff, I'll dig it out. And I said, well, probably not. Yeah, yeah we got, we yeah, kind of frown on, on, on that. Yeah. And that's why I told him, but I see the way he's, he said he's just that desperate to get into this. Can you look at this one, too? <laughs> sure, I'll look at anything else. Uh, Emerald Valley Circle, where it crosses where there's at the intersection of Ford <sighs> Creek. That's a really, really bad flood. <laughs> like I've got looks like road issues, road issues. Yeah, all kinds of road yeah. issues but if there was some way that you could click that you're a local government making this yeah. request or uh, some some sort of mechanism like that I'll, I'll check with our uh, the the guy that runs that program it's in our district office in Bristol I, I'll check with him and see if there's, if there's anything we can do like that then that feedback that they were asking about would, would yeah. come back to our email yeah I'll see what our options are there. 
Appreciate you coming. But I, I've got uh, four car cleaning I'm sorry. I've got you. I've got your content. Okay. okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> let me, uh, right. Just let me know if you need anything. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank You're welcome. You, Thank you. Let's have us take a 10-minute break. <laughs> Call the meeting back to order. Next item on the agenda is item 11, smart scale letter of support, uh, Ms. Starnes. You have two letters of support to consider this morning. Uh, the first one is for the Kingsport Metropolitan Transportation Planning Organization to submit a smart scale project for the Weber City uh, project, which would be from the state line to the River Bridge. Uh, it's important when you consider these resolutions to know that if you pass this resolution and it and we move forward with the application that you are standing behind that application as it moves through smart scale and if it's funded that this project will go forward or if you back out once pressure begins to mount from the citizens or businesses in Weber City if that does happen then you would be responsible for the cost uh, that VDOT has incurred up to that point so I just wanted to make you aware of that uh, the first resolution is to support the smart scale project from the state line to the river bridge um, the smart scale application uh, will be submitted by the kingsport metropolitan transportation planning organization because there is a separate pot of money uh, that they are eligible for and the the weighted factors this year are economic developments 30 percent safety 30 percent accessibility 10 percent congestion mitigation 10%, environmental quality 10%, and land use 10%. And the second resolution uh, is basically the same, but it would be uh, in support of your application for smart scale, which would be from the River Bridge um, to the Addington Oil uh, at the railroad crossings there at that intersection. So two separate resolutions. Do we have to separate them? Can we vote on them together? I would do them separate. Okay. All right. So with that, I uh, hope you had a chance to look at them. I have, and we will do the first one, and, which is uh, the one from the state line to the River Bridge, correct? Correct, for the Kingsport MTPO. Yeah. All right, do we have a motion on, on that uh, letter of support? I'll make that motion. Rick, you made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Tiffin, second. Any discussion? All in favor of saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I vote aye. So. All right, the second one is from the River Bridge to, where did you say? Chapel, let's see. Let me find the name. Addington. Quick yeah. stop. Yeah, but there's a name. Addington. Okay. The name of the project is US 23 at Chapel Street Safety Railroad okay. Crossing Improvements. So that comes all the way down that Weber City Quarter. Okay. To or do, the we y. Have, do we have a motion on the second? I'll make oh. a motion. <clears throat> Mr. Tipton made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Do you have a second? Any discussion? All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Ms. Starnes. Next is the ARPA projects. The uh, the committee met last week after we had our uh, budget finalization, so Ms. Starnes, if you would. The ARPA committee has three projects we would like to recommend for funding uh, from the full board. The first one is a website upgrade, and we would like to request funding of up to $40,000 uh, to redo the county uh, website. The second one is an AFID grant match of $25,000. Um, this is a one-to-one -one match with a grant EDA has received to build a farmer's market in Nicholsville. And the third one would be to um, work with a retail consultant up to $115,000 over a three-year period. Uh, this would be something at the moment we're going to uh, table, but we would like to earmark the funds uh, for that project and that is a three-year amount for the contract at 115 you said mm -hmm. yeah. and what is that again Fred? it's for a retail consultant um, it would be for a, um, a retail consultant to come in and look at 
all county properties and they would be the recruiter for retail type businesses and that is a three-year contract period we would have to do an RFP so that's why we want to up to a mile the second one was uh, 80,000 the second one was uh, 25,000 25, uh, grant match for the Nicholsville farmers market the grants 25,000 the match is 25,000 and 40,000 for the website that's great. up to 40,000 for the okay. website if it ends up uh, being more than that we will come back and ask for more but that's where we're at right now so the three total 180,000 would they be working with uh, yes that life yes Can we do these together? Yes, we can. We can. The Unless there's uh, one that you're not in favor of. Okay. If you have an issue with any, any one of these, we can do it differently. But if not, we will do it together. And we, we have these committees for a reason, and I, I like to take the recommendation from that committee to, to go forward with it. Uh, the one thing I would like to look at down the road somewhere, we'll get into that later. Let's do this first, and we'll talk about it. So. Uh, we'll do these together. It'd be the 40,000, 25,000. Total 180,000. So, do we have a motion to approve this these projects as presented to you from the ARPA committee? I'll make a motion we approve them. If nobody has any problems right. with them, Ms. Hood made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Tipton, second. Any discussion? I'll very much say aye. 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 Uh, motion carried. What I was going to say is we need to look, if we can use ARPA money to do it, is look at the old jail complex, the old sheriff's office on demolition. Uh, Y'all be thinking about that, the committee research, and another bill could probably be the, the, the lead on this board report back to you all on that. But we, we need to do something with that. Uh, and the storage, that they, they have stuff stored in the old jail, some kind of mod or something, uh, stored with temporary storage facility for that stuff. Bill, your thoughts if you think any of this is just doable, or your thoughts on what we should proceed with this. I mean, you're dealing with this firsthand. I mean. Yeah, the, the first thing to do is to figure out where we're going to put what's stored in the, the old jail now. Uh, some of it being evidence. So we've been working with the sheriff's office on trying to figure out uh, what kind of facility they would need. The other uh, uh, stuff stored in there belongs to the clerk's office. And it, it's also stuff that has to be stored for perpetuity. And uh, so. We're, we're looking at options there. Um, uh, as far as the demolition of the buildings, uh, that should be pretty straightforward. And then what we want to have after after the, they're demolished, if that runs, be a gravel parking lot until we decide what we want to do right. in the future. Okay. Is that stuff that has to be stored, Bill, does it have to be stored in a climate the, it's paper documents, a lot of it is, so I would imagine some sort of uh, condition space, uh, which the old jail is not really that right now, so uh, and I, I'm not sure what the evidence cons consists of. Uh, it's locked up and you can't see in there, so. Is there any storage room back in here that's available to all? There might be some storage area, but uh, nothing secure like that, uh, like where you could put evidence. But, uh, the reason I was asking if it had to be climate controlled is, uh, you know, you could. I was at an auction the other day and they sold a whole bunch of, uh, well, they sold four, these tractor trailer enclosed. Uh, and I didn't know where you could use something like that or not. I've been uh, in contact with the pod company and they can build to suit whatever you need. Uh, there's another issue with housing the prisoners that they bring to the jail for court proceedings and looking at pods. Uh, the, the only issue I have, <coughs> have with that is uh, everywhere I've seen doing something like that, like Dixon County did that for a while, they used pods. But it's something they did temporarily while they were doing something else. Right. So to sure. set it up without an end game or a plan, 
to move from the pods into something else, uh, I don't know if that's something that we can do long term or if it'd be cost effective to do long term. I know the sheriff's office has looked at contents boxes. I think that's what you're talking about for um, some of their files and stuff. So that I think that would work for them if we could put one of those maybe in a spot at the landfill or something. Yeah, the, the sheriff has asked about uh, a pod. I'm not sure what he's thinking about storing in it uh, up at the where we're putting the impound lot at the landfill property uh, in that area. Building at the break place, the white building up on the hill at the county home. Would it be suitable for something like that if it was cleaned up? It could be used. You know which one I'm talking about? Right behind the right behind the uh, cemetery office. There's a big white building there that belongs to the county also. Block center block building. On top of the hill? Yep. I'm not familiar with that. Is that the one behind Robert's tire? Mm hmm the one right behind Robert Steyer? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we've asked for that a few times, uh, especially for like a maintenance shop and, uh, and, and saying that we would maintain it, help fix it up and stuff, but we've been denied it uh, every time we've asked for it. Who owns it? EDA. Yeah, we'll fix that. Yeah. We'd fix that. We're paying the bills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd fix that. I mean, it's just a thought. I don't know. Something that's sitting there not used. It's like all the bays down there. <coughs> sitting down there not used. Not really. Not collecting no money. That's right. Not collecting no taxes. Yep. Yeah. I'm with you. I, I'm with you. I know. Uh, as far as that property, I'm, I'm just honest, I had a conversation about some things that we'll discuss later, not here, but uh, about another option as far as space needs. And so we'll, uh, we'll probably go into closed session to discuss that. But what we do. Anyway, uh, something to be thinking about, but you know, looking at the demolition side of it and what we can do as far as storage. And this is all temporary. Whoever, I mean, the judges may be concerned about something. That we're doing is it is not you know it's, it's a permanent solution but it would not be a permanent solution but temporary until we can do something different than what we're doing and most you know they did they put a lot into this uh what they presented us back a couple months ago and, and i heard a lot of back from people in the county about you know what we can and cannot afford and so I, i'm just you know pretty expensive stuff all right thank you our committee i've done a good job with this and your recommendations is taken seriously we know that uh Important what you do. Anything else on that? Duffield Days. This is for the fireworks permit, which is on your tablet, and in your extra packet is their application. And they will be using dynamic effects and fireworks company once again, um, a professional fireworks um, display for that um, fireworks show, which will be September 3rd. Um, and it will be located on the grounds of the Crook Road Tech Building in Duffield. EDA has passed a resolution um, that that's okay to use that property. Um, uh, I would like to ask permission to go ahead and approve the fireworks permit. I am still waiting to get the certificate of insurance and I will hold that permit until I get all the required documents needed. Um, but that way we've already got the approval done once I get those items. They've uh, always sent those um, in the past, so I don't expect any problems this year either. All right, on this fireworks permit, we need a motion to approve this uh, fireworks permit pending her getting the, the correct documentation, the insurance, and so on. Do we have a motion? So moved. Did you make a motion? Do we have a second? I'll second. Miss Adding. Miss Adding the second. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get that right, but I'm getting close to getting that right. Any discussion? Just a little change. Yeah. All favor vote say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. <coughs> the uh, $1,000 you want? We've already done that. We did that last month. Okay. All right. <coughs> County attorney items. Can you hear us, Ms. Kegley? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. 
You all have my report. I don't have anything to add. Can try to answer any questions. Okay. Anybody have any questions for our county attorney, Ms. Gagley? Miss you being here, but we got you, you know, anyway, but in person. Yeah, I appreciate you letting me do this. How have we done so far? You haven't had to punch me or kick me, you know, sitting here. No, I've thought about it a couple times, but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No. You've done well. All right, thank you, ma'am. All right, item 15, county administrator items, uh, Ms. Norris. The treasurer's account builder report is in your folder. Available cash after the July bills is $4,999,302.50. That is just a little bit, very little bit above where we were at this time last year. Um, claims for the month, uh, we have a few uh, large ones. Tobacco Region Revitalization Commission, uh, this is repayment number three for the APID grant, $50,000. So we will have two more $50,000 payments back to the Tobacco Commission uh, in 2024 and 2025. Uh, Baycor, uh, $117,804.95. Those are the two uh, larger claims for the month. So total current claims um, and early set, it's all the same this time. Total claims, $292,192.32 is what needs to be approved for payment today. I'm not sure everybody knows if so the, the people watching listening would know this uh, tobacco region revitalization commission payment. We, uh, we have two more payments to go. And that is because of Mount Top Timber and Dungannon where they were going to uh, do the work there. It didn't happen and it's all in the courts. I don't know where it's all shook out. Try to keep up with it, but COVID messed things up. So I don't know. They, those guys are they're dealing with it the best way they can, I guess. But that's just a repayment we're having to pay back because of that. But, the OLP plan that again. Anybody have any questions or comments for Ms. Norris? I don't actually pay bills. Uh, I'm actually paying bills. All right, Ms. Hacker made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Just a second. Any discussion? I'll bring up saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. The one thing that uh, I'm, I'm glad to see we've got nearly $5 million carryover from in our general fund, and I'm glad for that. Uh, I remember when I first got elected, that was a number that the uh, our, our uh, Davenport and those folks said we should have that much in reserve. So we're there, and I'm glad we got that much. We're able to keep that in reserve. All right. I do have a couple of things under miscellaneous. The first, um, we have been having some issues at Stony Creek Park um, with some illegal activities. Um, and the sheriff's office would like to request your consideration if they arrest someone on county property at Stony Creek, if they can charge them going forward, like have those people not allowed back on county property and if they are charge them going forward with no trespassing or that they are trespassing. Okay. So that's something that they want you to consider. Um, I think uh, they feel like that would be more teeth uh, if someone is arrested there right. that they're not allowed to come back to because we want to keep that a family yes. uh, park, family environment park. We don't want uh, things going on there that shouldn't be because you know that was built as a parking area for the Devil's Bathtub and we have. Um, a lot of out-of-state people come into that park and we don't want that that kind of representation hanging out there that shouldn't be Sally how can we proceed with that um, can you tell us um, I'm not sure uh, this is the first I've heard about it so I don't I haven't looked at it we need a chance to right Okay. Oh, for sure. Look at it and see what you think, and maybe in August you can let us know back what we how we need to proceed with that. If you would, please. Did you hear me? Okay. Hello. 
Anyway, we'll get back with her on that and uh, and see what we can come up with uh, as far as down the road somewhere, maybe next next month, and see where how we can proceed with that. Yeah, it's a new issue it that's is. just come up um, yeah. within the last week. So okay. something new. And she, of course, she's on vacation. We've not had a chance to discuss. It. Okay. Um, the second thing is the domestic violence officer for the sheriff's office um, is going to be changing positions there, and. We currently supplement the domestic violence officer's salary $4,956. And she currently, that employee waives insurance. She doesn't need uh, county insurance. So that has been a big savings. And as you know, because of the Affordable Care Act, um, if you have an employee that a position, a full-time employee, then you're required to offer insurance. So, um, what they're asking is for the county to continue that $4,956,000 supplement um, and that would be a $40,000 salary for a domestic violence officer because the grant pays $28,744 and they also, the sheriff's office has a fund that contributes $7,500. So um, the total would be $40,000 salary plus benefits. Currently, um, the benefits that we have been paying um, it has been $6,542 plus the $49.56. So we we're already contributing $11,498 plus whatever insurance costs we would have going forward, which can range anywhere from you know eight to $16,000 roughly based on single to family <coughs> plan. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on that domestic violence officer. Um, I think they're having a hard time if we took away the supplement uh, finding someone to take that position under forty thousand dollars because with the new legislation that's come out starting certified officers pay is forty two thousand that was bumped up from the legislation that was just right. passed through okay so just your thoughts on that on whether you want to approve leaving that in and let them try to hire at forty thousand for that position <coughs> So we would be putting in around eleven thousand five hundred plus up to twenty thousand with the insurance. Yeah, roughly. <clears throat> the insurance would be your additional cost. Right. <clears throat> it all stops. Would this be new money have to be approved or is, is it we could um, change that in the, when we update the budget. It yeah. wouldn't have to be anything that has to be done right now. Okay. Just food for thought then, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, I need to know whether... You want to proceed with it? Yeah. Uh, right. Do we need to vote on it or just, just a consensus of the board? I think a consensus would be fine. Everybody okay with it? Not voting? I'm okay with it. Well, I see a lot of head shaking, nods, sure. yes. Yes. All right. All right, you got. And then one other thing, um, I would like authorization to advertise uh, for a public hearing to set the new tax levy. Um, this will have to be advertised late July, so it'll be before our next meeting. And the public hearing would be late August because you have, because of a reassessment, you have to have a 30 day advertisement period. So that's why I'm asking for authorization this early because it would be um, advertised before next okay. meeting. So we couldn't get, we couldn't do it in September. It had to be done in late August to have a special call meeting or an adjourned meeting. Probably to do yeah, it. it would be an adjourned meeting. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we need authorization on this, and uh, I think that's need to do that. So need a motion to authorize uh, Ms. Sarnes to uh, advertise this. Do we have a motion? All right. Mr. Tipton made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Briefly, second. Any discussion? All favor of saying aye. Uh, uh, I oppose the motion carry. Anything else? That's all I have. All righty, Ms. Pam Cox. Uh oh, am I? Tourism next? director. Yes, uh, ma'am. Oh, okay. All hey, right. Pam, hey, Pam, before you get started, you come on up. Uh, well, I was okay. in control. You no, no, I, I was going out. I was going to answer. Jack, you know, he was sitting there next to you. Obviously, you've known him for a, oh, yeah. a long time. I was going to ask you, you know, if, it's kin, if it was kin to you. I was going to ask him that, but uh, <laughs> both of you are very colorful in, in your presentation. So. 
Jack, you know, Jack, well, Jack Mack used to be, um, Jack Mack used to be in uh, Trail of the Lonesome Pine. Well, what I, what I was going to get at, and I didn't, and he's, he left, I have a poll I want to donate, you know, to if putting up signage or whatever, it's a, a telephone pole, okay? A telephone pole? So they can cut it and use it for signage and so forth. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sure they'll take it. Right. Okay. I'll tell them, I'm supposed to see, apparently I'm supposed to see him tomorrow. Uh, Bruce just told me so. <laughs> right. That's what he told me? <laughs> so, we're going to go see Danny Dixon tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so, a pop. Okay. Um, are you going to turn me on? We you want your powerful on. Yes, please. And then, yeah, but then just as soon as you, we start the PowerPoint, then we'll do something, and then we'll do something, and then you have to do the others. Oh, okay. I'll keep going. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you have to make it complicated. You know, why can't be? Why can't be too easy? You've only known for two hours that I was going to stand here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay. The ball, Bill. Okay, you know. There are a lot of things going on. <laughs> okay. I can't talk. See, I can't talk without. I can't talk without this thing on. Well, I need that. I need that pressy thing, too. There you go. All right, you're in. Okay. So, well, we got to go back, so see, there's me. Okay, so this is my um, uh, quarterly tourism report. And so I want to start off first telling you some good things. Um, the Addy, it's the American Advertising Federation. Each, um, each, look, each, each community, they all have their own little advertising federations. And so they always have um, annual award programs and your agencies and folks like that and we could have submitted on our own so anyway the agency that did um, our brochure and the map and the kiosk and everything they submitted um, those materials to the advertising contest and we won the gold award for the Scott County brochure and the Scott County map let's go so if you all remember that's the piece that we did last year with um, uh, with the MLP funds, with COVID funds that we got. And then they won a silver award for the Devil's Bathtub. The ad that they did for, um, the TV ad that they did for Creation Kingdom Zoo won Best of the Show, wow. which that is really, you know, pretty significant. And, th you know, this group, this group, had never worked. Had never worked with. They never really worked with um, tourism with the tourism group. So they worked with us, and then they also worked with the town of Gay City. So we did get another marketing leveraging grant. Well, actually, this one fell under the purview of um, a DMO grant. And I will tell you that all of the grants that we had gotten. In the last few years, we didn't have to have any matching funds because of COVID. But now, going forward, we're going to have to have matching funds. In other words, we're going to have to come up with the twenty thousand dollars match to um, go on with the program. Last year, they would let us use in-kind funds, but we're going to be needing to um, have our own monies too. So we have forty thousand dollars that we're going to spend on Wonder Love say a week a month a year and these are the things that we are doing so Virginia Tourism Corporation um, they are offering a program through CrowdRiff and CrowdRiff is a group that they take hashtags like if you hashtag if you do Instagram and you hashtag Devil's Bathtub and you hashtag Scott County and they put them all together and it doesn't matter who has posted it on um, a website or anything or on Instagram, they put them all together and they can put them on your site. 
So they're doing this free thing with um, Virginia Tourism called Local Hood, and we can put stories, Google stories, on there on Virginia Tourism. And if you'll go to the Virginia Tourism site, um, I'll show you the one that is going now. But these are these are some of of what we've been doing, of what we put on there. Um, And then what happens is once they're on once they're shown on the Virginia well you don't have to Bill, that's okay. But once they're shown once they're shown on the there you go. Okay, go over to let's see. No. Go if you can if you can scroll if, no, not that little arrow. That other arrow. That arrow. That arrow. That arrow. That arrow. That one up at the top. Right there. Yeah. Okay. So see, you can see there's ours discovered at Will's Vatsa. And if you click on that, nope, 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 nope. Right. Click on. Okay. See, it shows, it'll, it'll show the stories. And it runs through, and, it sh and stories are the big things to do on social media and everything right now. Um, I don't really do them on Instagram or on Facebook because what happens is, those only stay up for 24 hours. But these Google stories that we're doing, they stay up forever. And so what these will do is once once they appear on the Virginia Tourism website, then they appear on our website. You don't have to show that one. But the one thing that I wanted to show you about that is um, what has happened in what we're doing with that which you know here's little scott county and most of the folks that are doing the local i mean anybody could do it it's free but a lot of you know a lot of the places have decided not to do it because it does take a lot of time well our agency is doing it for us of course you know i am paying for that we are paying for that and that's going to come out of the twenty forty thousand dollars that we have but we are showing up um, in impressions. We're showing up third. That means that um, people are watching their stories as much, you know, more so than anybody else's. As far as completing the stories, we're second. And then interactions, going to our website, we're second. And then visiting our website, um, we show up second. So that is a huge metric for us to, um, you know, for people to be on Virginia Tourism, and then they look at that, and then they go on to our website. And so, we are, the main thing that we're doing with this campaign is, most of it is video. <coughs> well, really all of it is video. We are gonna have, gonna have to do a reprint of the, brochure and everything, but, um, well, heck, it's technology here. I, there is a, there is a, there's supposed to be. So I'm supposed to perform report that in me. No, <laughs> <laughs> there's supposed to, there's a, there's a commercial on there with that little black spot is. Can you see it? If you, yeah. Planning a day trip, weekend getaway, or exciting vacation? Find your wander love in Scott County. Located in the southwestern tip of Virginia, Scott County is the place to go for some down home dining, one of a kind shopping. Okay, so this is this is the video that we did earlier, and what we did was we kind of changed it just a little bit and it's now 30 minutes long and it's got like four ads in it and it is running um an hour-long box in the tri-cities in the dmas um it's running in greenville gray johnson city kingsport rogersville bristol norton lebanon abington glade spring marion and gate city so it's running an hour back to back and I don't know exactly what time it comes on, but um, you know, it is it is running. So it's an hour long show. It's the you can watch that you can watch that on our website. 
that's still on their website if you want to if you want to watch it. It's a little different from what you're seeing right here, but you can still go up and watch that. And then um, then we're doing also then we're also doing um, commercials. And if you, I think you're going to have to show them, we've got four 30 second commercials. Um, if you I guess you'll have to hit it. I'm sorry. Fun of your Wonderland in Scott County, Virginia, your destination for family-friendly fun. Explore the beauty of nature, have a close encounter with exotic animals, and dance to the music at the Carter Family Fold. Experience natural tunnel for a ride on a chairlift and a tour through history. And rest at any of our comfortable bed and breakfasts, cabins, or rentals. With all the great restaurants and shopping too, it's mountains of fun. Discover Scott County, stay a week, a month or a lifetime. Okay, and then if you'll go over and play that one. Planning a day trip, weekend getaway, or an exciting vacation? Find your Wonderland in Scott County. Located in the southwestern tip of Virginia, Scott County is the place to go for some downhill dining, one of a kind shopping, and comfortable accommodations. Here in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, you'll find tasty treats, watch history come alive, enjoy toe tapping shows, marvel at exotic animals, and experience breathtaking natural wonders. Discover Scott County. Stay a week, a month, or a lifetime. Find your wonder love in Scott Then there's two more. <laughs> Sorry. Find your wonder love in Scott County, Virginia. This Appalachian community offers endless outdoor recreation and adventure. Experience the swirling devil's bathtub, one of the top scenic destinations in Virginia. Discover the majestic beauty of the natural tunnel and enjoy epic hiking, biking, camping, kayaking, fishing, and more. At the end of the day, you'll find plenty of great local restaurants and home style accommodations. Discover Scott County. Stay a week, a month, or a lifetime. Find your wonder love in Scott County, Virginia. This beautiful Appalachian community is the place to go for tasty dishes and unique shopping. Try some downtown cooking at the local legend Campus Drive-In. Indulge in delectable treats at the award-winning Family Bakery. Or take the Gut Buster Ice Cream Challenge at Teddy's Restaurant. Scott County is your shopping destination for fashion, collectibles, and fun gifts at all of our one-of-a-kind shops. Discover Scott County. Stay a week, a month, or a lifetime. So, find your wonder month. Find your wonder month. <laughs> so, sorry. Okay. So, we have four different commercials. It's divided into the outdoors, dining and shopping, entertainment, lodging, and in general. And um, so, it's running on in linear TV. Um, you get th about 33,000, almost about 40,000 impressions a month. And then it's running on streaming TV in Knoxville in the tourist markets that we've identified kind of like within you know about a three hour drive because of the gas right now um, and we did go a little bit out out a little bit further we get great we get great reception from um, the northern Virginia area I guess it's you know it's it's an easy drive down here to this market um, and then we're also playing one, they're also on social media, um, on Facebook, they're on Google search, they're on YouTube pre-roll, and um, it's playing, it's using the, the, the four same commercials just alternate in and out. And we do have a YouTube channel now, we don't have a lot of things on it, but we just keep trying to, you know, build that up. Um, I did see, I did see um, one of the television spots did show up this morning on um, Facebook as I was looking. Um, so I always just go real quick through Facebook and that did show up. And we're also doing part of, part of this um, grant that we applied for, they really wanted you to work with the visitor centers in the, in the region, in the area, in the state. And so we are we are doing um, one of the digital spotlights at Rocky Gap. It's a two-minute video, and I'm not I'm not going to show it. Um, it'll just take too long. And then you got extra points if you included places. Um, if you included all those, and we're doing brochure placements um, 
in at Rocky Gap. Rocky Gap is where um, Back of the Dragon is, and then Lambsburg, and then that's right, that's right there at that 8177 um, inter, interstate areas, and then Bristol, of course. So, when? Oh, the other thing is, if you all remember last time I told you that we had talked to the DEA about using that property to put in a visitor center based upon the information that we had gotten from you know that grant driven um, visitor survey and you know we still want to address the concerns of our visitors they still need to be able to find you know their way around they need the signage they need this they need that um, <coughs> they need a way to be able to get in touch with us um you know just to see what all is going on here so frida and i went to blowing rock and looked at a kiosk that they have up there their kiosks are i mean there's different ways that you can um, go about doing a kiosk and if we were to do a kiosk that would be through the thirty thousand dollars in the arpa grant that goes to um, tourism but we haven't we haven't really decided yet what to do about that um, we're going to have a meeting this month with my tourism venues and you know just kind of talk to them and see better ways that we can help them and I suppose I still say I still say that the best piece of property um, to even to put something like that is is the property that they wouldn't let us have for a visitor center um, because of the traffic and the ability to turn you know exit right and exit left whereas if we put it up here um, at Moccasin Gap you can only go if that's one way in and one way out you can't make a left hand turn any longer so you know we'll, we'll just see but um, we have to apply for that money by the end of the year, by July, uh, December the 30th, correct? So. Okay. So, and then for National Tourism Week this year, we sent out the information that was the result of our um, visitor survey. We sent that to all the folks in the area. And then we also did that little video that appeared. Um, we also participated. We also we also participated in the Virginia Tourism Welcome Center fan tour. And, you know, we were approached to do that first, um, to bring all of those visitor center folks here, but we couldn't afford to do it. I mean, I saw, I, I signed the checks for, I approved the funds for um, Heart of Appalachia and just the um, lodging alone was twelve thousand dollars so so we need to thank heart heart of appalachia for um putting the bill for this but they took them all over the region and we went to we started out that day it was a pretty cold I mean, you know in may you just never can tell we started out the daniel boone interpretive center um we went to natural tunnel state park they went to the um wilderness road blockhouse they went to the zoo, and at the zoo, uh, the bus got stuck. <laughs> You're sitting there, you know, and the, the worst thing that can happen to one of those tour buses, it's not really that the bus gets stuck, it's that you break their windows, and their trees were hanging down, and that's what you could tell, that's what he was concerned with, so we need to, you know, kind of, uh, do, do we we have gotten feedback on that and there's some some things that need to be addressed and concern uh, addressed with some of the venues and everything just some you know minor things that we need to tell them to fix in case you know we bring other tour groups in to see them and so we took them to Carter Fold that night they ate the um, Templeton's graciously let us have dinner that night at their venue at the Crooked River um, at the Crooked River Lodge and you know it was just it was just outstanding um, we were sitting there and you know it had gotten a little bit cold and so 
the fog was rising up out of the valley and it was just absolutely gorgeous stunning they um they have loved it uh, i've seen and talked to several of them since then and they're like can we can we come back to scott county and the heart of back life and i'm like well just come on so um these are the events that worked this spring and you know i will say that most everything has returned to normal so and that's you know, that is a nice thing to see so we did run the tunnel that's what we kicked off with and frank kibler you all know frank oh. lynn wisco he has run that race and done that race for the last 22 years and he retired this was his last race that he um put together and everything so they gave him a nice going away plaque and everything and fortunately it wasn't as cold this year as it was last year I, I mean it was just awful last year but so um, then they did gravel at the gate they changed the, that's the event that they changed the name of and <coughs> moved the date moved the time and I think that really hurt their participation this year they were went from almost 100 riders last year to 225 this year um, so they kind of need to but you know that's that's a gay city event and they just kind of need to think about you know if you've branded something one thing and people realize that that's what it is that's kind of you know once you start branding it's kind of hard to change it but uh, that's just my own personal opinion um does not reflect the views of the board of supervisors or anybody else so. <laughs> i just thought they were saying um okay and then they had they did do a new event in downtown gay city this year which was an overwhelming success they did this on um memorial day weekend they did their first inaugural jeep jamboree and it was packed the whole street was lined it was I think they were very, very well pleased with what happened with that event. Um, if you, oh, they also, we, unfortunately, Nicholsville Days was going on at the same time. Um, I did, I did get out to Nicholsville Days and, and get to take photos and judge the dog show. I judged the dog show with Bill's wife, Alana, and um, but then apparently, I was not dang it quick enough to get everything posted that day online and everything and somebody was very very extremely critical of the fact that I wasn't just jotting on the spot and didn't have everything up there when I should have so I apologize I apologize to that person kind of sort of um if you all I'm sure everybody knows that Rita Forrester who is the executive director of the Carter Home, won the most prestigious award ever this year. She received the Virginian of the Year Award. And I can remember she called me and she said, she said, she said, this just doesn't sound right to me. She said, some man from Farquhar or Fort, she said, I don't know how you say it, I said. I said, I, I said, I think it's far more. And then, <laughs> then somebody, somebody corrected me, and it's Fakir. Fakir, she said, somebody's called me. She said, it must be a joke. She said, I've won some big prestigious award. And I, she's like, I don't want it. And she said, and I've got to go do this, and I've got to do that. And I'm like, what is it, Karita? And she said, I don't remember. She said, I don't know what it is. And so she goes, and she goes to, uh, you know, to uh, Richmond, and they give her this big presentation, and then you, you, you see the story in the paper, and I call her up, and I'm like, dang, you're the Virginian of the year. I said, do you not realize what a big honor that is? And she goes, do you all know Rita very well? She's so humble, and she's just kind of like, well, I don't know how I, but so so then they had then those folks came down I called them I call them the secret society but they, they work with uh, 
the group in Ch there, out of Charlottesville, out of the um, uh, Charlottesville Law School or something. And so they had a big dinner for her. Danny was there. Um, we, she invited a lot of folks. She wanted to show them what true country cooking was all about because they good. treated her yeah. so nice and everything. And um, so they presented that to her at the fold so that everybody in Carson Peters played that night. So, you know, it was, it was a big deal. And, you know, Year. So it was just a vendors festival. The lady that um, wrote the Virginia is for adventurers, she did part of her scavenger hunt here in um, Scott County at Natural Tunnel. And she got some great publicity on that. And then, of course, we had the 4th of July parade. That was the first time that Gate City has done a 4th of July parade, and I saw some of y'all in the parade. Um, that, but yeah, you know, I'm not real sure. I think the United, the Gate City United Pentecostal Church, I think that they're the ones that sponsored this event for Gate City and the Gate City Frontier, but it, it, it was nice. And then, um, of course, Weber City did some 4th stuff and Dungan uh -huh. had their 4th of July parade. Who's oh, those cute little girls? Do you know those yes. little girls? Yes. Are they related to you? No, no. Well, oh, they're, they were so cute. Rue, uh, Dooley, and Everly. Dooley. Rue? Rue sisters. Rue is the little, the little one in the blue dress. Rue, that's such a cute name. Uh, they are my, uh, Dwight and Mildred Lane's grandchildren. Great-grandchildren, oh, actually. They're adorable. Amy and Michael Dooley's grandchildren. Oh, okay. So, and then, um, so we've had some new businesses. I'm glad to say we did some ribbon cuttings at Boutique 276. And she, I've, I've stopped in to see her a couple of times. And she said that business is going great for her. She's just as excited to death as she can possibly be. And we asked her where she got the name 276. And she was like, well, that's exchange here. Two seven six. So I would I would have never thought about that. Um, and then we went to the grain bin, and I know everybody. If you drive Wadlow Gap Road any, you were wondering what in the world is going in there. What in the world is going in there? And she's got a beautiful <coughs> shop in there. Um, so if you if you haven't stopped, I know, have you all gone? Well, I have. Remember, I mean, you went here at the last board meeting, but I thought we bought a quilt from there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, she, yeah, she has just some really interesting stuff. Um, she does. Yeah, so, you know, as far, you know, as, as far as I can tell, you know, we are, things are back to normal. Um, these are upcoming events. They are doing railroad days. Um, July the 16th. I don't know if they'll have a train this year. Um, remember last year they didn't have a train and so I'm not been to it. I've missed a couple meetings so I don't know what's been worked out. Um, they're doing uh, an entrepreneur workshop August the 4th at the Pioneer Center. Gate City Frontier is doing Back to School Bash. Carter Family Fold is doing Appalachian Rising August the 6th. Duffield Days is. That's the wrong date. That's right. I've written the wrong dates there. And how I got that, I don't know. That would be. The third the, on Saturday. The third is the. It's the. It's the second and third. Right? So it's Friday right and Saturday. No, it's always Saturday through Monday. Oh, okay. And the Papa Joe thing usually on Monday, Labor Day. No, it's on, it's on uh, Sunday. Uh, Sunday. So it'd be yeah. the third and fourth. Third, okay. Yeah. So, and Downtown Gate City is doing their first um, praise concert um, 
Rise Up and Praise worship concert with um, a group, gospel group called Unspoken. The Papa Joe Smitty Festival is going on. We have our first meeting for that next week. Um, Hungo Farms is reopening. They will be open September the 1st to October the 31st. I have talked with him. He said, yeah, we can't wait to be back open. So um, IBMA, the International Bluegrass Music Association, is happening again um, September 28th through October 1st in Raleigh. We normally go to that. Um, we just may go again this year. I don't know. A lighting of the tunnel is going back on and the Gay City Christmas parades are going on in turn up. So we are doing, I'm going to do hand this out. On July the 28th, we're doing a venue meeting. I'm sending out my invitation by today. Um, and I'm trying to invite all of the venues that have something to do with tourism. And I'll put something on Facebook too to tell them to come. And we're doing that at the Daniel Boone Wilderness Road Interpretive Center, six o'clock. And we're going to talk about, you know, the kiosk, whether they think the kiosk will be beneficial for them. Because there are things that you can add with the kiosk, such as, you know, if they wanted to um, have coupons or things like that. Um, but all of those extra things that you add on, they cost money. So we need to see, you know, what. And even if they think a, bit, a kiosk would be good, I don't know now what's the best thing to do with that money, since we couldn't do the visitor center. Um, what their biggest concerns are and the ways that we can help uh, help them from a tourism perspective. Um, you know, I've seen the folks at Clinch River Life, they've been doing great. I see their little bus do their turn. Even with that, even with that construction, there at the um, bridge, you would think that that would have really hampered them because they have to do that little turn right there. They're still being able to make that, so it still seems to be okay. Um, free publicity right now, we're at 129.808. That's down from just a little bit from what it normally is. Um, and then, so our social media, it you know, it just keeps going up. Um, I continue to do the weekly emails and one thing one thing that has become interesting this year is that those weekly emails are they gain and gain in popularity and I mean we have like about a 20% open rate on those which industry wide is about 6% so that's really a pretty good thing and so do you all all have any questions I'll let you pass those in case you want to in case you need to remember what I said. Any questions or comments for us? Comment, I just don't get the point of passion of what you're trying to do, you know, with something on this end of the county in terms of the visitation center. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, well, one thing, one thing too, if we do a kiosk, you've got to have, um, it has to have Wi-Fi. So, um, have to have Wi-Fi to operate it, and I don't know if there's Wi-Fi up there at that any place else, but maybe we'll, we'll work with um, Scott County Telephone Co-op to put Wi-Fi wherever they are, and um, if we do end up doing one, and make that a Wi-Fi hotspot. So, does anybody? Do you think, Ms. Cox? Oh, I have something. So. I'm going to stay for a little while. So, and if I'm going to stay for a little while, I've decided something. I've decided we all need to do something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do something amazing. I'm glad you're staying. I'm just sorry we're not going to um, Australia. Was it Australia? Well, we can still go. She's, <laughs> she's still going. She's still All going. Right. And my husband still ain't going, so I still need somebody to go with. All right. Sounds good. We'll have a blast. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's do something amazing. What did you have in mind? I have something in mind. I knew you do. That's why I'm going. <laughs> so. I, I have something in mind, and I'm, I, and I'm, just, I'm not going to let it go. All right. I'm not going to let it go. You have a property sitting there. That there's not been anything done. Let's build 
something there. Let's build that agriculture center and that indoor outdoor facility. Um, and then if we could get somebody that wanted to do a housing development in that area, they could do an equine community and have some trails and some things like that. And there is somebody that might be interested in doing that. Don't y'all want to do that? Sounds very interesting. Well, okay. Why don't you put, why, why can't we put it, why can't you, why can't we put it to a vote? See what the citizens want to do. Isn't there a thing called a referendum? There's a little thing called money that we're going to have to come up with. <laughs> oh, no, I, no, I got that settled too. Okay. So you can take that jail and stuff in the courthouse. This wasn't my idea. Somebody, it was somebody else's idea. So you can move them in here and you can move our offices to where the teletech building was. And then see, we're all over there together. And we're over there with the um, equine and the agriculture center and the indoor outdoor center. And we'll all have a jolly good time. <laughs> I guess you want me to sit down now, don't you? <laughs> I like it. Was it, it you was know, a I'm a big supporter. Thank you. What? I'm a big supporter of you. I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, so, so, you don't know until you try something. Right? Absolutely. A center like that would be ideal. It would be ideal. We are so we are so close. I, I've of, mentioned it a few times, and in, in the past, other boards have even done studies. I, I think I, I told I've you about got, Scott Jarrell. I've got the study. I've uh, got the study. You know, it, it, at the time, it, it was a lot of money, and I'm sure it's still a lot of money. There, we, but, yes, but, but we can get money. But it, I mean, you know, the the space, not 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 just office space, but you could have. Uh, uh, like a small arena, you know, where you could have <coughs> rodeos, uh, uh, agricultural shows, uh, ex expos, mm -hmm. uh, farm expos. Uh, all I mean, it's there's all concerts. You could have mm -hmm. all kinds of things that would bring people in, and then, of course, to make sure you know they didn't spend their money here. Right. Uh, you know, that's 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 how we pay for it, but. Uh, and that, that's something I've, I've sort of, you may have the numbers on this, uh, I don't know, I may need to talk to somebody in EDA or maybe we can find out, but how, the, how much money we think to we, people are coming, you know, uh, is there a way for us to look at people's yes. receipts? And yes, we can, I mean, you, we, we can pay to have an economic development study done. Yeah. Um, that what's that group called? The Chumic? I don't know. It starts with the C, and I can't really put it. I'd I'd like to know the numbers. I mean, that's that's what it all boils down to is how much you know. Well, what 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 do you call those? Um, feasibility study. Yeah. You just do you know have somebody do a feasibility study. You start there, and then if it's um, you know. So I'll go then. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Pam, here's some extra if you want. Oh, okay. All right. We're down to item 17, comment, request, recommendations. Mr. Deere, do you have any of those? Thanks, staff, for all their hard work. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Tipton. Yes, I think the good Lord, we had a Vanderbilt visit, and so we're waiting on the uh, results probably today or tomorrow. I feel good about that. But, uh, we will be here, so I thank the board for all that you do, and I thank the staff. Uh, I think we, we have a good board and uh, a lot of good, interesting ideas. And I believe everybody here wants to serve the people. Uh, we don't look at it as a, a district; we look at it as a county as a whole. That's how that it ought to be. And uh, I want to thank uh, <clears throat> Ms. Nelson and. Uh, Mr. Osborne for coming today and them sharing uh, about the uh, the convention of states uh, issue and we, and if you haven't been thinking about that you should uh, we 
should try to get on, on board with that if you're not. And I um, was grateful to be out in the parades uh, on the 4th of, well, I guess it was Saturday for the Gate City Parade and then uh, on the 4th of July for the Dungannon Parade and to be a part of that and to see the people coming out and uh, finally getting back out into the communities and out in the open again. And so, again, I appreciate the staff for all that you do. <clears throat> and you make us look good, so appreciate that. Mr. Harris, have anything? Uh, appreciate what everybody's done. Glad we've made it through another fiscal year. So, hopefully okay. this next one will be better. Right. Mr. Rick? Uh, I really have enjoyed all the presenters we've had today from the first to the last. I, I think it adds to our meetings a lot when we have people come in and express their opinions. Okay. And uh, Pam gives you something to think about, doesn't she? She wouldn't be Pam if she didn't she, give you something she, to think about. She wouldn't be Pam. Yeah. She, uh, she, she, she gives you a lot to think about, especially well, the last her. thing she threw out there. So, yeah. I appreciate all of you. All right. Miss Ed? I don't have anything. Miss <coughs> Addie? I do have something. That okay. I do want us to think about, consider, and I don't know um, what everyone else feels, but I will tell you, um, I want us to reconsider, consider, I mean, do something to this food tax that we've imposed. Um, the small businesses that we have put that on is just a handful, and it is a lot more than, it is a lot, in my opinion, it's more trouble for them than it's going to be for us to for it to be worth. Um, the front porch in Fort Blackmore I know is affected by this. Midway Market's met, uh, affected by this. The ones in Duffield are affected by this. And I, I understand that the McDonald's is the largest generator of those funds. But I think we need to really think about what we have done to those smaller businesses because we have heard that we have in my opinion and I don't feel like I fully fully thought about that and considered that when I voted so I do think we need I mean we've imposed another tax on them as a government entity <laughs> and I mean I'm not and I understand I just don't think that I, I don't think that it's going to be worth I think we need to think about putting a amendment to it to have that when they exceed a certain amount or you know let the smaller businesses that are doing this fall into this category maybe um, I don't know I mean I I want to talk to Sally about it I messaged her um, I just feel really strongly that we need to ch think about changing or ed editing that or amending that because it is a lot of paperwork for those folks and we have put an 11 percent tax increase or we have we are collecting 11 that they are 11 percent taxes on the front porch uh midway market um rally mart rally mart i think we need to think about that because i honest to goodness don't think that the and the more I thought about it, the more it's on my heart, it's burdening my heart to, to say something about it. Because I, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't feel like I fully thought about the implication of that before. Because I don't think what we're going to gain from those smaller businesses is worth the trouble that it, that it's, that it does, that it has caused for them. Okay. I can get you a report that shows what was collected. We received our first payment in July, and I know that was close to $14,000. And I know um, Beverly at Front Porch still doesn't have her cash register where it can do all the tax buttons. Rally Marta talked to them. They didn't have any trouble with implementation. implementation um, but I do know that we got almost $14,000 for the sure first. That was from McDonald's. I'm not sure who it's from. I don't, that's the report I need to see. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see that too, if you don't care. Can I back up and say something? Or can we back up? Sure. I, I fully agree with you. There's, there's some, you know, I, 
it's one thing about the paperwork. I'm sure there's a lot of paperwork, you know, that they, that goes into all that. But you know, I've talked to a few of the smaller, like gas stations. You know, and they'll they'll make biscuits and you know sandwiches and stuff like that. You know, one thing that we might see is that they'll cease to do that. Yes, they, they, and that's what you know, I'm. We'll, that's what's we'll, we'll drive them from doing that. Uh, one of the gas stations I talk about, you know, it, uh, that I talked to, you know, this is a <laughs> This is a bad time, you know, for all businesses. Uh, you know, it, uh, yes. with the uh, uh, pay scale and uh, you know the minimum wage, things like that. Uh, but I was talking to him. You know, the EPA or not the EPA? It's the Virginia. Uh, I guess I. I guess I don't know. The EQ. Uh, I guess that's that's what it was. But anyway, uh, forced him to buy. A twenty thousand dollar savings bond, and in case something happened, but if 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 he would have a spill, that's the first thing they get. They get that to help cover the, you know, and, and, and we can go on and on about these little little things. You know, we might not think that's a lot over a year's time, but that's a lot on a small business mm -hmm. uh, where they're not where they're struggling right now anyway. Yes. Uh, Time-wise, I think it's a it was a bad time to implement that, uh, and I know we have to run the county. You know that's, uh, but uh, I I think we need to look more into it. Maybe in, uh, if there's ways to adjust that, I, yes. I don't know. But uh, you know, I've, I've had the same same feelings. Okay, <clears throat> Bert, all of you, and I don't have anything to add. Have you made it productive? Uh, anyway, we will meet back here. What's the date in August? Do you have anything in the session? No, okay. Not that I know. August 3rd. August 3rd, all right. So with that, we will meet back then. If nothing else, we will stand adjourned.